Hello everyone, this is Latia for you coming today with another scripture from the Lord. We are in Ephesians chapter 1 verse 8, Genesis chapter 7 verse 9, and Romans chapter 4 verse 12. Let's go ahead and pray and we can get started. Thank you, Father God, for this word. Thank you for helping us to have revelation of what it is that is going on with this great grace that you have given us. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. All right, you guys, Ephesians chapter 1, verse 8, which he lavished upon us in all wisdom and insight. And so this is actually speaking because of the previous verse about grace, right? It's talking, it says the forgiveness of our trespasses according to the riches of his grace. And so we know that our forgiveness was not based on us, right? It was based on the complete um, grace that was poured out over us, so richly lavished upon us um, and done in its fullness by Christ Jesus to pay for all sins, past, present, and future sins right and so it was lavishly and richly poured out on us and we have to realize that this is not of our own doing this is all because of the goodness of God because of Christ's power and his his death his burial his resurrection um he did this thing right not us not we ourselves and we are not deserving of any of it and yet the only thing we had to do was believe right and and that causes us to receive that beautiful redemptive new covenant package right it's it's all everything that we could ever need both here and in all the way into eternity And so this was a grace given to us by Christ Jesus, and we can have eternal life because of it, righteousness because of it, amen? All right, and so it says, which he lavished upon us in all wisdom and insight. I was reading a commentary, and it was saying, I thought it was just so beautifully put, he didn't give us just enough grace right? He gave us more than enough grace, right? And and that is a part of the forgiveness of our trespasses according to the riches of his grace. It says, which he lavishly, which he lavished upon us in all wisdom and insight. So God knew what we would have need of, that we would need a lot of grace, right? A lot of what we don't deserve, which was the forgiveness of his sins and the not counting our sins against us, right? And so it says in all wisdom and insight, meaning he foreknew, He knew the future. He knew what you would need. He knew that you would go back and back and back and back and you would do it again and again. And we would just keep on at it and keep on at it until we came into the true, you know, power and fullness of God. But either way, he knew that we were going to need a lot of grace. Amen. And you, if you know your thoughts, if you've ever just analyzed your thoughts, you realize that you need a lot of grace, right? everybody needs a lot of grace sometimes the thoughts that fly through my mind I'm like Lord please forgive me for even thinking that I don't know about y'all but sometimes the things I think I'm like how did that even come from me and you know sometimes I know some thoughts are from the enemy or whatever and some thoughts are even possibly tests from God to see if you will go down that and allow that to happen or or thought to to be, um, to take place, but you know, God is just a good God, right? Lead me not into temptation, Lord. And so, um, and deliver me from the evil one, but deliver us from the evil one. And so we just ask for those things, knowing that, you know, this great grace that's being poured out on us is so lavish. It's so great. It's so abundant. And it's exactly what we need. That was the wisdom and insight that God had, you know, before he even 
started all of this. He knew we were going to need a lot of grace. Amen. All right. And so Genesis chapter seven, verse nine, two and two male and female went into the ark with Noah as God had commanded Noah. The, the sheer fact that we are protected, the sheer fact that this end times is not going to overtake us and cause us to fall. Um, you know, this is a great, great grace, right? It is a great gift that God gave to us the same way he gave to Noah and his children. He gave us a great grace, which is the redemption of our, our lives, right? The redemption of our souls. Um, he calls us not to have to go through that wrath, but instead to follow him and to to walk under this great covering of grace, right? And so um, it says two and two male and female went into the ark with Noah as God had commanded Noah. And so they were being obedient. They were walking with each other and in, as instructed. And remember when they went into that ark, I'm quite sure that might have been they had to have faith that God was going to do what he said he was going to do for those seven days they waited. And so God had insight, right? He had insight to the amount of grace he was going to have to give for them, right? He didn't say, oh, well, you know what? Come out of the ark. <laughs> he didn't say, oh, you think it stinks in here? You know, because that's how we do as humans. When we are helping someone, we always, you know how we are. Oh, you better be grateful, right? But no, God knows that we have need of grace and he knows that we have need of mercy. He knows our thoughts. And, and he knows our heart, right? And God knows that if you think it's a, a certain way in your heart, it's just like committing the offense, right? And so we, you know, God has been good because some of us have, you know, we've thought some crazy stuff, right? And so we need to be grateful to God that he has provided such a lavish grace, and so it says two and two male and female went into the ark with Noah as God had commanded Noah. All right. And so Romans chapter four, verse 12, and to make him the father of the circumcised who are not merely circumcised, but who also walk in the footsteps of faith that our father Abraham had before he was circumcised. And so let me just say this one last thing about Noah. You know, it says two and two male and female went into the ark with Noah as God had commanded Noah. So I'm sure the, the, the animals were under a mandate, right? So they knew probably to come on and get on the ark, right? But as far as his wife and his children were concerned, you know, they had to submit themselves to Noah too. Those many years, I want to say it was like 12 years. I can't exactly remember. 12 years of building the ark, they had to submit right to Noah and and just imagine you know Noah had to to wrangle everybody because he, God was commanding Noah right not not um the sons he was commanding Noah so Noah had to get himself in alignment and he had to to walk forward in the things of God and he had to get his family to submit to all these things for all these years too right? So that took faith. That took faith. That took believing and trusting in the word that was spoken and standing firm in faith. Amen. All right. Romans chapter four, verse 12, and to make him the father of the circumcised who are not merely circumcised, but who also walk in the footsteps of the faith that our father Abraham had before he was circumcised. All right. So Abraham was a father of um faith, right? He was he it wasn't about the circumcision that set him apart or made him um 
righteous. It was totally his belief in God that was accounted to him as righteousness. It says to make him the father of the circumcised who are not merely circumcised. So it's, it's not just about that action, right? That action is an outward reflection of something that's already happened on the inside, right? Just like with our faith in our works, our faith, we have our faith, we believe, but eventually you're going to see the works, but it's not the works that saved. It's not the works that um, provided the righteousness. It is all the belief that did that, right? It says, and to make him the father of the circumcised, not who are not merely circumcised, but who also walk in the footsteps of the faith that our father Abraham had before he was circumcised. All right. And so he had that faith before he ever committed to circumcision. He had the faith in God. That was what was accounted to him as righteousness. And so we have to walk in that righteousness, just like, um, uh, Noah and his children had to believe God, right? It, it it had to, they had to have that in their heart. They had to go forth in faith, right? And so when we believe, right, we are able to be lavished upon by this great grace. And, and it is a beautiful thing because we don't deserve it right? It is not something that we deserve. It is not something that God is saying, oh, you did this right. So therefore I'm going to, no, no. Christ did this of his own free will. Even while we were yet sinners, he died. While people were spitting in his face and ripping out his beard, um, he died. He chose that life, right? And so we have to stand firm in faith. We have to be patient as we wait. We have to realize that there is a great grace over us in the protection from this wrath that is about to be poured out. Amen. All right, you guys, let's pray. Thank you, Father God, for this word. Thank you that faith without works is dead and you are showing us how to have the works too. But thank you for showing us that it is not the works that save us. It is by the grace that you have so richly, so lavishly with all wisdom and insight poured out upon us, Lord God. We love you. We praise you. We thank you for such great grace. We give you all the glory. It is in Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. All right, you guys, if there is anybody out there who would like to receive Jesus as your Savior and Lord, go ahead and pray this prayer with me. But more than anything, believe it with all your heart as you confess it with your mouth. Dear Lord Jesus, I ask you to come into my heart. I make you my Lord and Savior. Jesus, I believe you died on the cross and I believe you rose again on the third day so that I could be saved. Thank you, Father God, for doing this for me. In Jesus' mighty name, I pray. Amen. All right, you guys, if there, if you pray that prayer and you believe that prayer, Holy Spirit has come into you and sealed you until the day of redemption. And no one can break that seal except Christ Jesus when he comes to redeem his church. The Holy Spirit is in you to lead you and guide you into all truth. And he's going to do just that. Amen. Um, one of the things that Christ wanted us to do and not forsake was the fellowshipping of ourselves one to another. Go out, find a church home, find other believers to be around so that you could stay sharp in the word of God, as well as go out and tell other people about Christ and what he's done for you in your life. Amen. All right, you guys, take care and be blessed. And don't forget to go out and be baptized in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit in the name of Jesus. All right, be blessed.